Last time on this series, we've taken a look at some patterns in graphs, and that is, you know, certain properties that can actually help us in writing our algorithms. Today, we're going to look at a slightly different topic, and that is how we want to actually store graphs. You're watching another episode of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. So today's episode is entirely devoted to the storage of graphs. Now, at first glance, that doesn't seem to be too difficult. I mean, I have a set of vertices and I have a set of edges, right? Can we just, you know, store them? I mean, sure you can, but when it comes to storing graphs, we want to try and find a method of storing them that is firstly, you know, not too heavy on memory use, and secondly, it makes it fast for us to perform graph operations. One example of such an operation is, say I have a graph and I pick up one of the nodes and I want to find who its neighbors are. How much computation am I going to have to do to find out all these neighbors? Obviously, when we're doing graphs, we want to be able to do things fast, especially because, you know, graphs can get pretty complex. So yeah, that is why some consideration needs to go into choosing the right data structure for your graphs. Just to make this negative example more concrete, let's say that we've stored all the edges in our graph as just an array. So this array says that, you know, vertex X is connected to vertex Y. So if I were to try and find the neighbors of a particular node, I'm going to have to iterate my way through this entire array to see basically, you know, which nodes are attached to the node I've chosen. This is going to take a while, especially if, you know, you are doing something at a large scale. I mean, take Facebook, for example. If you need to perform a linear search just to generate your friends list, that's going to take a while and multiply that by millions of users. So I know that was a contrived example, but hopefully that's enough to show you that, you know, some consideration needs to be put in place. Today, we're going to look at three different ways of storing graphs. So we're going to start with the adjacency matrix. Think of an adjacency matrix as a table. Let's set up a very simple sample graph here. Basically, an adjacency matrix lists all the vertices, both in the rows and columns of the table. Whenever two nodes are connected, we simply find their intersection on the table and just check the box. Of course, in terms of programming, this will probably be a Boolean array that is two-dimensional. But yeah, you get the idea. We can picture it as a table right now. I think it's worth mentioning at this point that every edge in the graph actually maps to two ticks in our table. The reason why this is so is because we have an undirected graph. If x is connected to y, it implies that y is connected to x. And so, well, basically we end up with a symmetric adjacency matrix. In other words, you can actually reflect the matrix about its diagonal. This is not the case if you have a directed graph. For a very simple reason that, you know, if you have an arrow from x to y, it means that you can reach y from x but it does not mean that you can reach x from y. So yeah, just a little interesting observation. So you can see why this is called an adjacency matrix. Anytime two vertices are adjacent to each other, which is just a different word for saying, you know, they're connected, then we take a note of that. And this, of course, allows us to basically figure out how all the vertices are connected to each other. So let's say I wanted to find out whether these two nodes are connected to each other. It is a very, very fast operation because as you know in programming, we simply need to just address that particular point on the table. If we have a statement like this, we can simply put in the identifications of both the nodes and that gives us the answer, true or false. So while that one operation is very fast, there are also some disadvantages. For example, if I want to define all nodes connected to a particular node, I'm going to have to go along a row and basically check every single item. So that's slow. I don't get an immediate answer. On top of that, because we are using a table, there are basically many items. And as a result, we have to store a lot of stuff in memory. So yeah, this is bad in the sense that we use a lot of memory. So that is an adjacency matrix. We can actually sort of evolve this idea a little bit 
and create an adjacency list, which is the second data structure that we're going to be looking at today. Instead of having a table, why not have a set of lists instead? An adjacency list basically compresses an adjacency matrix into a single column, which associates each node to a list of nodes, which in turn are its neighbors. These lists can be of any length. Of course, it's not hard to see why it's called an adjacency list. It is very simply a list of adjacencies. An adjacency matrix has a space issue. This doesn't because it doesn't have to store all the redundant data that says, you know, this node is not connected to this node. It has none of that. You're only taking up space when two nodes are connected. This also gives us one advantage that an adjacency matrix doesn't have. If I wanted to list out all connections to a particular node, I can right away because the list is already there. I just have to go to a node and there you go, that's a list of everything that's connected. So that operation becomes fast, but a different operation becomes slow. And that is if I wanted to find whether two vertices are connected. I need to now find one of the vertices first in the list. That of course gives me a list back. And then I need to search in that list. So now finding whether two vertices are connected, in fact, takes more time. So yeah, I hope you're seeing a pattern here. We are actually doing some sort of trade-off between these two techniques. Now let's move on to look at our third technique, which is called an incidence matrix. This one is interesting. Instead of having all the vertices, we actually have vertices and edges in our matrix. So basically what we are noting down here is whether an edge is incident or connected to a vertex. And basically that is how we figure out the connectivity of everything in our graph. An incidence matrix shares the same problem as an adjacency matrix, which is one we haven't discussed, but if we were to add a new vertex or a new edge in the case of an incidence matrix, we actually have to resize the entire matrix. You can of course see why this is so, we are actually adding more rows or more columns. This is generally non-trivial in a lot of programming languages because, well, resizing doesn't just happen like that. You have to allocate new space, you have to copy all the information from the old matrix to the new one, and that could actually be very slow. So yeah, these are basically some different ways of storing a matrix in memory. Which way is the best? Well, really I have no answer for that. As you can see, certain techniques are faster in certain places and slower in others, and a different technique might give you the opposite. So really, what data structure you use depends on what your needs are. I'm not sure if we'll be coming back to these data structures in later parts of this series, but yeah, I'm just telling you everything at this point so you can, you know, think about this if you ever want to implement any graph algorithm. Anyway, that's all there is for this particular episode. I'm sorry all this introductory stuff has taken like three weeks, but we're ready to jump into the actual content starting next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you gained some insight today, but until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.